You may not always associate feminists with the pro-life movement, but one group is trying to change that. Katherine Zeltner has more tonight. When you think of a feminist, what comes to mind? How is it that you can be a feminist and pro-life person? Meet Saren Foster and the stereotype may be shattered. She founded Feminists for Life in 1972 to address the root causes that lead women to abortion. Foster says if you're for women's rights, it makes sense to be pro-life. Women deserve better than abortion. Her group reaches out to universities because college-age women have the highest risk of abortion. For many members of Feminists for Life, those statistics reflect their stories. When I had my abortion experience, I didn't feel that people were being very pro-woman towards me as a woman. Joanna Young was in an abusive relationship when she became pregnant. Her boyfriend forced her to get an abortion and then... The next day, my abuser dumped me. Young now fights for life. Joyce McCauley Benner was raped in college. After finding out she was pregnant, McCauley Benner decided to carry her son full term. Women have a strength that I think that they don't realize, and that's something that I want to bring. That's the message that I want to bring, is that we're stronger than we think we are. That's the strength these modern-day feminists want to share. That we have to create a world where pregnancy in, is celebrated and motherhood is you know, support, mothers are supported, fathers are honored, and every child is given their chance at life. So more women can flex their motherhood muscles. Feminists for Life knows the financial challenges and decisions women face when they become pregnant. That's why their magazine offers the Raising Kids on a Shoestring Issue. It includes resources and advice so women can have support when they have their baby. Wyatt? It is a good group and a very important message. Catherine Zeltner, thanks very much.